hours without any kind of break is not a, not the easiest thing in the world, you know. So right. um, uh, who knows? So and, I had this uh, same kind of situation mm -hmm. um, years ago. I used to DJ. There, there's for your guy. hiss. There's that. There hiss. It, it was there for a second. Yeah. Oh well. I don't know where that's coming from. It's yeah. got to be. I don't know. No. Let no. me try. Car, I'm gonna try this. Car going by. All right. Huh? I, I just took the I took the the audio processor out of the line. There's nothing else. Now you're distorted. You're distorted? <laughs> yeah. Turn your mic down. How about that now? There, that's better. Okay. So anyway, when when I was like 21 oh, years let old, me say, I let to, me say we're on TV now. Go ahead. I used to DJ parties, mm -hmm. and I, and I was switching to go from working weddings and bar mitzvahs and things like that. I was switching. I, I had gotten a really good job in a nightclub, mm -hmm. and so. I had, you know, this was nice money at the time. This is early 80s. So I said to my brother, who was always looking for a way to make money, I said, Mike, you know, the guy I work for, the mobile DJ guy is looking for a guy. You want it? I mean, it's easy. You come on down. So he came down one party and he watched. And then I said to him, OK, you're going to do the second hour. And he was just out of his element. He could, didn't know what to play next. He goes, how do you know what to play? I said, I don't know. I survey the crowd. I look at people. I get a feeling. And then I just kind of go with it. I don't know. He couldn't do it. So it's, it's you know, one of those things. You take it for granted. You know, it's for, for, other, for those of us who are newer at this, it's, it's, it's certainly, uh, there's a lot going on. Wow. Anyway, we got, we're, we're on the, uh, on the uh, I I live stream now. Uh, so all of you are on TV at the moment. And so look pretty. Right, Patrick? Right. Huh? My mom, you want me to put my uh, um, Kim Jong-un picture back up and then that's what everybody sees? Uh, you can put it. Uh, no. 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 <laughs> you, <laughs> but didn't you, who had a mouth cap the other night? Oh, you had your Cuba cap, right, uh, yeah. Jim? Yeah. Wait a yeah, minute. I got oh, it right oh, here. Minute, he's got it Sorry. right there. So the, since we're on TV tonight, they can they can see Jim wearing his. Uh, you bought that in Cuba when you were in yep. Cuba. Actually, I traded it for a couple of toothbrushes. Where were you in prison? No, oh. I was on the street. <laughs> I see. Before it's we cool. went to Cuba, yeah. I went to the local dentist here, and I said, "We're going to Cuba. Would you like to make sort of a donation of anything?" And they gave us a whole bunch of. Uh, uh, like travel size oh, packages of toothpaste. Oh, well, that's uh, the stuff they always give you when they like clean your teeth and you're leaving. Yeah, rolls, and then they give you this little plastic. Yeah. yeah. And so I, we took the, yeah. we took those with us and we basically gave them out to people. And I gave this guy these couple of toothbrushes at this location, and he went and gave me this hat. So really, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Now how in, in Cuba, don't they have socialized medicine? Yes, yes they do. They do. Yeah, and but nobody has toothbrushes. Well, I guess they do. Yes, but I guess <laughs> who wouldn't mind something free? I mean, somebody came up to me and handed me something for free, and I'd still take it. And I've got a good health care system. So Patrick is uh, showing us a photograph of uh, uh, Chairman Mao. Before. Do you know I've seen him when I went to China? I saw him because he's, yeah, he's probably he's, everywhere. Went, soon? Well, they did the they did the uh, the. Uh, um, Lenin deal on him, you know, where they they stuffed him and put him on display. <laughs> like trigger. Hmm? Like trigger. Like trigger. <laughs> did you ever go did you ever go to the Victorville Museum and see Trigger? Yes. Yeah, yes. the Roy Rogers Museum and see Trigger. And, bullet and they, Buttercup? Y, 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 did I go with you? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> because we would always stop what is what is this now? What else what else have you got? It's hard to read because you're a little blurry tonight. Huh? Well, from Chairman Mao Zedong. Oh, that's the little red book. Yeah. It yeah. looked like the Haggadah. It, it looks like, it is the <laughs> Chinese Haggadah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I wanted to send, you know, Jim had his communist hat out. I, I wanted him to feel part of the group. Uh-huh. Well, so, I mean, I would have, I, somewhere here I, I, in the uh, house, I have my um, uh, hat from China. I got one of those Mao hats. You got to get one of those Mao hats. I also I also have a uh, a Mao wristwatch. Mickey oh, Mouse. That's uh, one from Mickey, column A, Mi Mickey two Mouse. from column B, and the wonton soup. Well, it's like a Mickey Mouse watch. From column A. 
Revolution. No, it's like a Mickey Mouse watch, except it's Chairman Mao and his hands are the are the. Uh, are, are, are. They sell them on every street corner. There, it's the most popular thing going home with a with a Mickey Mouse watch. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, a silly communist revolutions. How many would you like? <laughs> they, uh, Anarchists are us. <laughs> what was it? The, the, the trouble is in China, when you go to any place that's like uh, well-known, there are always these, always these people trying to sell you stuff. You know? And my uh, wife decided she wanted to, uh, one of them came up and said, do you want to buy this book? On the, and she looked at it, it wasn't a bad book. It was about, you know, I don't know, Chinese relics or something. So he, she said, how much? And he said, uh, um, ten, uh, ten, uh, uh, ten, what's Yan. the one? Yeah. yeah. And um, I'm trying to remember exactly how they did this whole thing. But... I gave them the money. They said, no, that, that was only a one or something, and they handed it back to me, and I didn't know that it was actually a South Korean dollar. <laughs> <laughs> a little street exchange. So the exchange they gave me was I thought I was getting back, oh, I thought I was getting back 10 won, right? And instead I was getting back, like, it wasn't even, I think it was like, it was like 50 cents worth of South Korean uh, a dollar you know, and, and uh, I had been taken by the Chinese. So, you know, but that was the only time. A every time after that, I learned how to, uh, how to keep people away from me when they were trying to sell me something. And it's a Chinese expression going, leave me alone. And that expression is, booyah. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Booyah. It's only one of four phrases I learned in Chinese. And I forget the rest of them. Anyway, oh, who's here? Dan Myers joining us. There, how are you doing, Dan, this evening? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Yeah. I just, uh, it's a chilly day here in Ohio. Yeah. Oddly enough. Yeah. In May. I guess it's probably the same in New York. Isn't it unseasonably cool? Yeah. Well, it, no, it's oh. not unseasonably cool here. It's, uh, it's ab around 70, I think, today. But it was oh, ra yeah. it's raining like hell, and it's getting humid, you know? It's not yeah. getting I, nice. I got out of there just in time. <laughs> uh, you, you did get yeah. out of here just in time. It's very nice the days you were here. Oh, when I, when I was there, it was magnificent. But it started to rain while I was driving to the to the airport, uh -huh. uh, so I I missed the inclement weather. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So I have nothing to talk about. I really don't. Uh, and that that's the way it will be for the rest of the evening. Well, uh, who's who's gonna go uh, see Godzilla? This week, yeah. I was going to go see it today, Adley, yeah. oddly enough. Yeah. Huh. Well, I, uh, I, 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 I did the review, which you'll hear later on on the on the network with Michael yeah. Snyder of Godzilla. And he said it was okay. He said it, compared to how bad it could have been, it was okay. Well, we saw 10 years ago, we saw how bad it could have been, didn't we? With it, the yes. Other one. <laughs> yeah. that, that Michael, that Matthew Broderick version. Well, this one, one, one of the writers on this one mm -hmm. is, uh, is what's his name? Uh, Frank Darabont, mm -hmm. who did Shawshank Redemption. And, you know, he was responsible for the first year of The Walking Dead. And uh, he's responsible for The Green Mile. You know, good director. And he yeah. helped he helped write the screenplay on this, so you know maybe it isn't that bad. Yeah. and he got Heisenberg. So. Yeah, he got Heisenberg. Yeah, he got his, <laughs> what's his name from uh, Cranston? Cranston. Frank Cranston. Cranston. Yeah, who's playing uh, uh, Lyndon Johnson here in New York now? So that's got to be just from the you know I've heard a lot of those Lyndon Johnson tapes. That's got to be a uh, riot to play. I would imagine, just as an as an actor, I'm sure that Brian Cranston just chews it up. I, I would imagine. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you can chew scenery pretty easily on something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's not. Is there anything happening politically, guys, that we need to talk about? Yes, something really important. What's that, Mark? Let me get it up here because I I want to get the facts right. Yeah. Have it. Yeah. Apparently, As, yeah. in Connecticut, they're banning chocolate milk in the schools. What? 
what, it, they're banning chocolate milk from the schools, probably and because it has no nutritional value, right? It's just basically chocolate syrup. It's milk. And, but yeah, but it's less milk than kids would get. What? Why are they? Well, why are they banning it? Uh, it's just pretty much for what you said there. But it's like you've got to be kidding me. All the other problems you got, you're banning chocolate milk. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, but, that like that that's gonna solve problems. Yeah, you, you know? got you got people uh, kids shooting each other in schools there. Uh, but but uh, they don't they, you know they, they, they don't seem to don't who who's what's Josh is uh Josh going back. You're echoing hell are you there, Josh? Oh here you got me. Oh okay. in the beginning there we were hearing ourselves, but we haven't gotten we don't have a picture from you at all, so well, I'm on a phone. I'm on my phone. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, then we wouldn't. Yeah, get my. Uh, we had a hell of a storm here. Uh, I don't have any internet. Yeah, I don't well, have any internet. My goddamn TV's fucked up. So I just called to say I couldn't. Probably, I don't know if I can participate tonight. Well, you're participating. Listen to you. Yeah. You sound fine on Does the phone. Does it sound okay? Yeah, sounds great. Sounds terrific. Okay. Well, what? if it uh, if it starts to cause you a problem, let me know. I'll hang up. Oh, okay. Fine. Uh, uh, but chocolate milk in the school. So what do they say is the reason why they want to ban cho uh, chocolate milk? Did Bloomberg suddenly become the mayor of Connecticut? What is this? <laughs> oh, Connecticut. Yeah, I mean, this is on, it's on NBC News. Uh, voted to ban chocolate milk from school, school lunch and statewide as they wrapped up their legislative session Wednesday. And move that critics warn could change kids' lunchtime habits for the worse. <laughs> Well, okay, uh, so uh, but it, it, it's just like this is beyond like what <laughs> you know. Well, well I, you know, I I would agree if somebody were to say if you want kids to have milk because it's good for their growth. All right, the chocolate milk probably is a watering down of the nutritional value not of milk. Not much, and it encourages well, it them to drink help. it more. It's probably just a flavor. It tastes good. Yeah. If, it's just thing, yeah, you're added, a little powder, a little syrup, not much. Well, if you Alex, really next time, next time you're in a supermarket, Alex, look at what the nutritional, the caloric uh, values for both regular milk and chocolate milk. Yeah. There's a difference, but it's you know it's like look, yeah, it's not humongous. Pretty, you know, but, uh, but 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 you know what? What I think the question, a better question, would be: What good is chocolate milk? It encourages well, kids to drink milk. Huh? Yeah, well, to, to the lactic intolerant Jew, not very good. Uh, not very good. <laughs> well, okay. but then you can't drink any milk anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And no the trouble different. with having a lactic, uh, a lactic intolerant lactose, Jew is, yeah. uh, lactose intolerant Jew, the, the b biggest problem with that is they don't stop talking about it. <laughs> um, they won't, they, they're intolerant of it and just won't stand for it. Yeah, but in, in any event, uh, I just... I don't know. I mean, I, I think that they should have better things to do with their time than to sit around banning chocolate milk from the schools. Well, I tell you, I uh, when I was in school, yeah, I think you know, and we'd have regular milk with our lunch. And I think on Fridays we had chocolate milk, and I really looked forward to. I mean, chocolate milk is awesome. How can you possibly complain about chocolate milk? I never chocolate liked. Milk I never like. I never liked chocolate milk. What? No, and I love chocolate, but I never liked chocolate yeah. milk. Oh, what about, man. When I, I was a Google. kid, I loved milk milk, you know? You ever, you Nothing better you than going to, huh? you who you who Oh, yeah. let me tell you. you let me, uh, ta let me so, tell you. So. Let, let me tell you a little story about you who all right? So this is years ago, and I'm working at WMCA in New York, and they the uh, sales rep says, uh, we'd like you to come with us to the annual you who lunch. And I said, what's that? And I said, you know, you who the drink. And I'm from California. I don't know from you who the drink. But I, I have been lived in New York long enough that I've heard about you who. So uh, I go to it. And uh, who's the guy who was the, was it Yogi Berra that was the? Uh, yeah. Yes, Yogi. It was yeah. Yogi, Yogi Berra who was the uh, spokesperson for you who. And I'm sitting next to Yogi Berra. All right. Again. I'm a California kid, so I'm really not impressed that I'm sitting next to Yogi Berra. <laughs> Except that I, whenever he opens his mouth, he sounds like the stupidest man in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so 
uh, I, on the other side of me is the guy who is in is the science guy in charge of you who research. All right. <laughs> and I say to him, so what is so great about this stuff? Right. And he says to me, do you know that you could take a bottle of you who bury it in the sands of the Sahara Desert for 100 years? Pull it out, open it up, and drink it, and it will be as fresh as the day you buried it. And I looked back at him and said, what's in this shit? <laughs> okay, great, and I love you. <laughs> drink, it with, drink it with a Twinkie. Yeah. <laughs> drink, it, drink it with a Twinkie. Yeah. It'll live forever. <laughs> right, or kill somebody. Yeah, and, and according to Lost, you can also drink warm beer that's been on a deserted island for like 50 years. Oh, so. uh, yeah, they did that, didn't they? Believe it when I see it. Yeah. <laughs> how long is beer good for? Once they make it, brew it, how long is it actually good for? Pretty sure when it's warm, it's not good for that long. Right. Yeah, and but if I mean, it gets cold and then you let it warm up, it gets what they call skunked. You can't yeah, get... Yeah, about five beer minutes. Can't, Beer can't go back and forth, hot and cold, hot and cold. It gets skunked. It gets the skunked. English, uh, drink skunked. Uh, room temperature beer. Uh, you know, the uh, I think, English I think beer. there, yeah, there are some beers that, that are recommended to drink at room temperatures. And Guinness, maybe? Or? Guinness is stout, yeah. yeah. Not room temperature, but not the way we're normally used to drinking chilled beverages. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's in the 70s. It's somewhere in the 50s, probably, the temperature. Of a of a stout. Oh, okay, all right. Um, but uh, because but but anyway, a you who will last a hundred years in the sands of the Sahara <laughs> Desert. Um, That's and, good to uh, know. Uh, did you drink you who when you were young? Uh, sure, uh, uh, Mark. Still do. You still do? Yeah, I mean it's something I grew up with. I mean they uh, have it there. Yep, they've had. Yeah. This is what's weird. Yeah. In the sixties. You can get you who in the Northeast and down here in Florida. Yeah. You, you know, it was so weird to see you who next to sodas you couldn't get up north. Go figure. Okay. So and they only the sell one it. Thing that's, one thing that's interesting Yogi Bear used to own a part of you who. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, well, I just thought he was a spokesperson, but I didn't know he was. Again, it was a small percentage, but he owned part of it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he. He has a granddaughter now, too, that has a Twitter account in his name, and she tweets out stupid shit that sounds like he would say it. You should check that out sometime. Huh. Does she do that on purpose, though? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's to make fun of her grandfather, who apparently she has a good relationship with. Is he still alive? Yeah, but he's uh, very he's sick now. Fine. How old is Yogi Berra? He's 89. 80. Yeah. 80. Yeah. 90, huh. 90, yeah. I he can't get that. out to the games anymore. He's, he's pretty... Uh, in fact, he just sold his house and he's moved into assisted living, I believe. They so or his house is on the market. Yeah. Wow. wow. And he's got you who buried in his backyard. Yeah, yeah. They got, no. <laughs> Save it for a hundred years. He's had so much you who that when they bury Yogi <laughs> Berra, he'll be just as fresh a hundred years from now as he was the day they buried him. <laughs> That's what you who brand formaldehyde. That in the comedy business is referred to as a callback. Um uh, <laughs> But uh, you know, it it um, um, uh, what was I going to say? I, I, I'm trying to think of what we used to drink out in California, uh, and I can't remember what we used to drink out in I, California. I Mountain Dew. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mo Mountain Dew. We that that came later than when I grew up. When I when I started out, there were like there were things like Nesbitt's Orange. Uh, but th that wasn't great orange, but there was another orange drink, and I'm trying to remember the name Me of it. I... Something of California was the name of it, and it was a pretty good orange drink. But we didn't we used have... to have we... Sundew. In New York, we had Sundew. Sundew? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, it was an orange ain't anything I wouldn't Sundew to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Moxie? 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 I like Moxie. Now, Moxie, again, was a New York drink. you got to remember, the, it, 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 everybody should remember that uh, up until a few years ago, uh, the country had various brands across the country that were regional, and that was it. Right. You know, you didn't get Yoohoo in California. You may not have even gotten it in the South. Um, now, I didn't see Yoohoo until, I think, you know, here in Ohio, like the 80s. Yeah. Wow. Something like that. Yeah. When I was late teens, uh, 20. 
You know, when I moved out here, you couldn't get Dan and yogurt. You couldn't get Hellman's mayonnaise. They called it best foods. Best uh, foods. Yeah. But no, no. Here's no. Here's what you had. Hell, and it's. I think it's still that way. Hellman's is what East Coast. Right. Best foods is West Coast. Same company, yep. just different names. I did a spot for Hellman's, and I had to do the tag twice. Leave it to Hellman's and leave it to Best Foods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, I never could figure out the reason for that, uh, but that's the way. And I think it's still that way. I oh. still think it's it's Best what? Foods yeah. in Carl's California and Hellman's Hardee's in New York. and Carl's Jr. What? Yeah. Or Hardee's what and is Carl's it? Jr. for the fast food <gasps> chain. Are they really? They're the same? Yeah, Hardee's yeah. and Carl's Jr. Same. Huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they have Hardee's. They have Hardee's in the Midwest, and I think Carl's Jr. is more southern. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, when I was uh, I was in uh, uh, near Amityville, and I'm driving down the Sunrise Highway or uh, sun, whatever they call it, and I see a white white castle. Exactly. Yeah, I knew you were going to say <laughs> that. I used to drive by there all the time. Yeah, it was a white castle. Uh, I was on my way to this diner. I wanted to uh, do diner food because it's been so long since I've been in New York. Yeah. And uh, uh, I saw that white castle and I was very tempted. But uh, uh, I had a BLT instead. Ah, <laughs> oh, you missed out, man. I yeah. love white castles. I, do they have, yeah, do they have white else. castles on the West Coast now? I wonder. I, I, I don't, don't think, so. I think so. I think you can get them in a supermarket, but they're not the same. Yeah, the frozen yeah. Yep. Uh, slider. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I miss my California yeah. trips to to In and Out. In and Out, wow! I had that for lunch today. You know why I can't do In and Out burgers? Have you ever looked at the bottom of the cup? Uh, no. Uh, no. It, 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 there's a reference to a biblical tract. No. no. Yeah, they, yes. That's Look at the bottom of the cup, and it says uh, 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 something that's like four fifteen or whatever. I don't know what the. Uh, uh, I'd buy it if it said four twenty. But what? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see here. Let me look it up. Bottom of uh, bottom of uh, let's see here. What what was the name? In of and it? out burger. Bottom and out. of in and out. And that's why I won't eat Chick Fil A oh. anymore because of the political views. I used to love Chick Fil A. Yeah, here I we won't go. go there anymore. Here we go. Yeah. Got a picture of it right here, uh, and it says uh, John three sixteen. 316, yeah, that's the big verse they always pull out. You see it at the ball games all the time. Yeah. Well, what is John 316? Well, let me look it up. John 2, God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Is that it? Is that what and it is? whoever so believeth in him shall have everlasting misery. Yes, that's it. That's it. He's right. So wow. We're never going to talk to you again. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm ashamed that I know that. Well, hey, I'm going to. I, I grew up in Southern Ohio. We're just stones throw away from Kentucky. So, listen, I love the oh, world. I'm actually, I'm reading something, and it says the soda cup is different from the milkshake cup. The milkshake cup is different than the water cup, and the hamburger and cheeseburger wrappers have uh, verses on them as well. Oh, like really? I have verses from different books, like the milkshake yeah. book would have a verse from the Quran oh, or uh, the Torah or something like that. <laughs> well, well, there's, there's, that work there. the there's another but one clean is, cut on the caps at In and Out Burger. It says Nahum 1 7. Uh oh. What is Nahum 1 that's, 7? That's, that's, with that's discount. Religious, huh? <laughs> that's not in any religious book I know. But wait a minute, here's another cup. Here's another cup, Proverbs 3, 5. Somebody look up that one quick. What is Proverbs? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine understanding. Oh. Really? You know that? No, I'm reading it on oh, the oh, internet. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. And guys are good. <laughs> oh, let me see here. What? Oh, <laughs> there's one cup they've got here. That obviously was photoshopped, right? Which you yeah. look under the cup of uh, In and Out Burger, and it says "Hail Satan." <laughs> <laughs> God damn! You know, when when I went out for my training for my last job, it was out in Cupertino, and yeah. one of the things I was looking forward to was an In and Out Burger. <laughs> I had it; it was fantastic. I went back there, you know, a few times. Now I find out about this, and I'm like, oh. Come on. You know, in and out, they have all sorts of 
they they have all sorts of things that aren't on the menu. You can yeah, get I animal think. style, protein style. It's amazing all the secret stuff that they got. Yeah, yeah. anal style. <laughs> uh, uh, Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. Yeah. Um. I guess I'm a little confused as to why things like that would deter somebody from going and enjoying something. When, I mean, we'll take me, for example, with my political views, but if you look at my iPod, 95% of what I have on my iPod is all liberal music, all hippie music, all music from the 60s. I mean, it, it, it good music, so I listen to it, and it's anti-war music. I don't give a shit. It's good music. Well, don't you and understand, though, us liberals, we we protest things by boycotting. Right. And you guys protest them by just trying to make them illegal. Uh, see, I don't... See, <laughs> I, I saw a uh, uh, thing on Facebook today about uh, boycotting some shit because I think the Koch brother did it. When I see shit like that, I go buy more of it just because I think boycotts are bullshit. So uh, if I hit the... tells me I can't, I do it twice as much just to fuck them. And the other example I'll give you, just so that I'm even, you know, so I'm evenly uh, distributed here. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's a shopping center that I go to quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and there's a Planned Parenthood that's in the shopping center mall area. And every once in a while, there'll be 50 or 60 protesters out there protesting the place. Do you know when I make sure that I go shopping? When you know the protesters are going to be there? I'm fucking there just to fuck with them. Just, so I fuck with the left and the right. I don't like All being right. told what I can do, where I can shop, and why? Look, I'm a big I, I happen I happen to agree with you because I don't know if you've listened to me for any amount of time. You've heard me say that I'm against boycotts. I, I'm against boycotts unless that boycott is against something uh, uh, that uh, by going to that store or buying from that store, uh, I would be endangering other people. And I think that that's why I wouldn't stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel as an example. OK, but uh, I I just think that um, I don't like the idea of boycotts because I've had people boycott me and it's 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 unreasonable because they were boycotting me for reasons that were so ridiculous that you couldn't even believe it. You know, believe it or not, the people who were protesting me was were was the local gay organization in San Francisco. Glad. And the reason they were protesting me, you know what? Oh, this is, you're going to love this. You know why they were protesting me? Because I had Sam Kinison on my show. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, and when somebody asked me, isn't Sam Kinison homophobic? I said, not that I know of. In fact, uh, I think quite the opposite. I know Sam well, and I don't think he's homophobic at all. And they were going to boycott me because I said he wasn't homophobic. He was a comic. And I, uh, you're going to love this story. So they all come, uh, so the station, to placate them, right, invites the uh, local chapter of GLAD and some gay representatives to have a sit-down meeting with the boss, my oh. newswoman, the program director, and me. All right? Oh, man. And they, they come armed with a tape recorder. And they start uh. playing all these things that Sam Kinison has done in his act. And all I could remember was uh, Lenny Bruce complaining about the fact that whenever he went to court because they arrested him for doing his act, some cop would be on the stand doing his act, you know, <laughs> and, and getting it all wrong. Well, here they were taking pieces of Sam Kinison's uh, uh, act and just playing parts of it. And uh, the funny part about Out it was context. these things were so funny. That the guy, my general manager and the program director were like covering their mouths so nobody would notice they were laughing. Because, <laughs> you know, stuff's coming out of this tape recorder like, I don't know about you, but I don't want some hair, is, is my dick in some guy's hairy ass, you know. Um, but nothing that was homophobic, particularly. 
But it, he, they're playing, and they're playing this stuff out of context. And then listen to this, and they're like really stern and angry. They were like, they were like what I imagine some kind of women's Christian temperance society would be like, you know. <laughs> and finally, uh, I stood up. And I said, may I say something? And they said, yes, of course. I said, you are taking what he is saying completely out of context. You are wasting my time. You are wasting the time of all the other people in this room. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care what the fuck you do. You can go fuck yourselves. And I turned around, they walked do. out the door, and slammed it behind me. <sighs> You could do that when you're number one, I guess, huh? Well, I mean, they, well, I mean, they, they, they hated me after that. They, but they, I'm they sure. were, they were, it was kind of hard for them to come after me because really they didn't have any real, I, you know, it wasn't like I said anything homophobic or that Sam even said anything homophobic on my show. But now, that's what I hate. This organization was huh? called Glad. Glad, yeah. The, 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 I'm going to stop buying their bags. <laughs> in, in future, what happened in future years, by the way, I went back. I, I was let go from this radio station at a certain point, and then I went back and started working again. And one of the promotions we had was if I worked out at uh, and and lost a certain amount of weight or gained a certain amount of muscle tone or whatever, they would give me five thousand dollars to give to any charity of my choice, and I chose to give half of it to to Glad. Uh, and and they said, "Gee, uh, we remember we had problems with you." Blah, blah, blah. I said, "You never had problems with me. You you sh you should have learned some less lesson out of that." And I said, "That is never go after friends. Go after enemies. You know, right. check yeah. uh, check first. You know, uh, yeah. I have never had anything against the gay community. You, you, know. you know, they talk about uh, Sam Kinison, but do you remember what uh, Eddie Murphy?" You know Eddie Murphy's comic act in the eighties was was as, was more of a well. If there was anything homophobic about Sam Kinison, Eddie Murphy's was more so. Well, you know, I mean, I they didn't realize it. For instance, prior to this particular action that had happened, although no, maybe this was later on. I don't can't remember, but I was the first guy in radio to tell the comics who would come on the show, guests who come on the show, no jokes about AIDS. AIDS isn't funny. Yeah, and they, they at that point they, every comic that came in had an AIDS joke because somehow it was something you could make fun, you, you yeah. know, make jokes about AIDS. And then I was watching TV one night and I saw somebody with AIDS and I said, "Ain't funny," you know. Yeah. It's this guy was you know had the, literally on the edge of death, and I'm looking at him going, "And we're making jokes about this disease." I uh, it's like nobody would come on and make a joke about cancer, you know. Yeah, uh, there's only one AIDS joke I've ever heard. Uh, that uh, that I thought was passable, uh, and and that was the joke that went. Uh, what's the worst part about getting AIDS? Having to tell your parents you're Haitian. <laughs> now there is nothing about that joke that's homophobic. Nothing. Right. Oh, the Haitians could complain, but you know, they were too far away to boycott me. Uh huh. But. So the reason I boycott like Chick-fil-A is because they came out, I guess it's about a year ago now, maybe a little longer, about yeah. they came out with this whole thing about being against yeah. same-sex marriage and stuff like that. And so you know that they're giving money to organizations and they're supporting them, and I just don't want to give them my money to do that. Well, with. you know, It's more that than yeah. anything else. Uh, Chick-fil-A Chick did not come out against same-sex marriage. The, uh, the, the president CEO. or the CEO said that he did not support same-sex ma same marriages. Uh, uh, you know, it's not that that corporation uh, uh, did anything to, uh, uh, to cause, that, uh, cause that kind of action or that kind of boycott. Yeah. Everybody be careful. We've been joined by Doug. Are you there, Doug? <laughs> Doug, are you there? Well, we lost Doug. Uh. Oh, thank God. Anyway... Um, uh, there it, he is. It, well, yeah, well, that, that was the case with Chick Fil A. I was kind of mixed about uh, about Chick Fil A in that um, I, I felt like I feel now that I'm I'm not for boycotts, and that this was being said injudiciously. I think by the head of a company. I think that heads of company should be very careful 
about making public statements like this because it's not that it affects them as much as it affects their employees who may not necessarily agree with the person. You know, let me right. try. Let That's me try true. Doug again. Doug, are you there? I am here. I'm sorry. It's sure the is. First try. Hey, I, I appreciate you taking my phone call. Yeah. And I'm, sure gonna, I'm, and I'm sure you're going to hang up on me as soon as I uh, say I this. You're talking about like AIDS and it's not funny to make jokes about it. But it was, I think it was Bon Jovi. Don't hold me. I don't know if it's Bon Jovi for sure, but had a T-shirt on that said it was a takeoff on that, you know, uh, bug spray raids, where it says AIDS kills fags dead. Bon Jovi Jovi. wore a shirt like that, really? Somebody wore a shirt like that. Well, it was. I'm sure it wasn't Bon Uh, Jovi. It's Um, hard to believe. I remember the shirt. I, I. I remember seeing a shirt like that. Yeah, yeah I couldn't attribute it to anybody. But yeah, I, I've seen that shirt. And there was like there's some fat comedian, like the fat, you know, not uh, labeled Larry the Cable Guy, but it was like this fat comedian like came out and was like, hey, I have no problem picking up, you know, chicks now because he was like, this guy was like really overweight. And it was like, they can tell I don't have AIDS and all that. I mean, it was like just really poor taste, but still kind of yeah. funny. It wasn't Bon Jovi. It was Sebastian Bach. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Who is Sebastian Bach? <laughs> I have no idea. Skid he's Row, a, uh, lead singer a, Skid Row. Uh, was yeah, a, he, used uh, to, he was the lead singer of a, of a metal band called Skid Row. Yeah. yeah they're, they're not around anymore. They, they're yeah. on Skid Row. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I, I, just, I, I just felt that there was, you know, there, there was nothing <laughs> funny about... about uh, um, AIDS uh, on any level. Another and, guy uh, that I can't buy his pizza anymore is Papa John. Oh, I can't buy Papa John either. Yeah. I, I just... Because uh, he, he... Not only... I mean, down here in Virginia, there really isn't very much good pizza, you know. Um, but I won't buy Papa John's anymore because I don't like what John Snatter stands for. He won't... You know, he's got this whole thing with... Uh, with with healthcare, with his workers, and he's going to, yeah. you know, charge a couple of pennies more for your pizza, okay? Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, Patrick? Yeah, I, I'm in agreement on the Papa John's, but only because their pizza tastes like shit. Well, yeah. yeah. Too. It's very, yeah. It, it, people, people did say that they could uh, they could quit Papa John's because it was shitty pizza, but yeah. they, had, they really were depressed over the Chick-fil-A thing. Yeah, Because I've never had Chick-fil-A, but they said it, it's great chicken. It, it is, is. And, that, and really those good. waffle fries are great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Doug. I mean, I live in South, in, down here in the South where, like, Chick-fil-A pretty much was born. Mm-hmm. And it really just kind of depressed me. I mean, it's a good sandwich and all that, but just, like, the bigotry that just sort of like, yeah, we're going to support these guys because, you know, they're against, you know, you know homosexuals yeah. and all that. Right. It, well, it, they it, they it, actually it, wound up doing a lot of good biz, a lot of business out of that because yeah, people like Sarah like Palin point. came along and said, "I'm going yeah. to Chick Fil A tonight to have something to eat because I'm going to support this guy." And I probably like lose eighty percent of my you know Facebook friends or so called friends that like supported this thing. Yeah, you know, I, I mean it, it was like just really sort of like oh, you gotta be kidding me. This is like disturbing. Yeah, I think um, it was really Pat- overblown. Patrick. Well, you know, I would have if there was a Chick Fil A around me, yeah. I would have gone there just because everybody was saying don't go there, because I'm a prick that way, yeah. because I don't like <laughs> being led by the nose like a fucking sheep, because I can think on my own. Oh, no, and but, if but, I but, didn't no. agree with them politically, I wouldn't go. No, but you were and, you would have been led around by your nose because. Uh, it, Sarah Palin and those people were saying, "Well, we're going to go to Chick Fil A to protest this right. thing." If you were a right winger, it was okay to go to Chick Fil A. If you were a left winger, you had to be knee jerk about it and say, "I won't." My feeling is that there are a lot more people involved in Chick Fil A than this guy that that runs the company. And That's when true. the guy who runs the company makes a statement like this, he's a stupid asshole. He's not a stupid asshole because of the comment he made, but the fact that he's jeopardizing the well being and the and the livings of all the people that work for him. Absolutely. And he should be more careful about what he says in public. In private, he could say that. Personally, he could give all his money to anti-gay stuff or anti-abortion stuff. But when you make a public statement and you're the head of a company, you're jeopardizing the the the, the income of your uh, the people who work for you. He's the sterling of chicken. The sterling <laughs> of chicken, exactly. 
Uh, we don't uh, have them in Canada, minute. so... What? I have to worry. What? Well, we don't have chick f whatever in Canada, so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah. What would you guys do up in Canada if Tim Horton said something homophobic? Yeah, what if he said something homophobic? Oh, yeah. What would you do? What would you... That... My God. Well, that, first off, whole... Tim Horton himself is dead, so he's not going to be saying anything. Well, whoever the president... Of Tim I, I suppose I, I do a seance and I channel him from the grave and he says, <laughs> I, I hate gay people. He says, AIDS kills fags dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea because I don't. I like I said, I don't drink coffee anymore. I don't eat donuts and and things I like know, that. But but Tim Hortons, we, you're, uh, you know what you're doing. Canadian, you know Canadian what you do. Society would crumble. He doesn't Tim drink Hortons, coffee anymore. He doesn't do eat live? donuts. How do you live? You, you're I, he's, he's turning. Not, he's turning into a Seventh Day Adventist. No, but hey, I just. <laughs> in hey. case Alex ever gets up this way, he doesn't have to worry because in Kamloops, good old Kamloops. Yeah, they have a Five Guys. Do they have one in Kamloops? Oh, oh that's yeah. good. That's where I. That's I. That's, when I was yeah. still eating meat, I would get a Five Guys burger. So yeah, most price hamburger in the world. There. Hey, can I say something about? Wait, what, did you, what did you okay. say about they, Five Guys? They suck. It's the best burger. They you know something? You're what? a fucking they, asshole. They, You're a fucking no asshole. Way. That is they one of the best suck. burgers around. Awesome. Uh, now we got this place in Wilmington called PP's Grill. It's a small location. <laughs> PP's no, Grill. No, PP's Grill. I'm yeah, going to eat at PP's yeah, Grill. Made out of pee. That's what you like. <laughs> hey, grill? Would you like some made of our of... special sauce on that? Uh, it's how, made how, out how... of tube steak. <laughs> PP's Grill reminds me of that story that happened. Just... <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hey, shut up, Doug. Doug, shut up a second. What did you say, Jim? I said PP's Grill makes me think of that story you used to tell about the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> hey Alex, do yeah. you remember how Julia Childs makes a leek salad? Yes, yeah, first you take a leek. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first you take a leek. Yes, yeah. Doug. Well, hell, I damn lost my. You know, oh, train man, uh, did we derail you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> derail, Doug. I am so sorry not, we derailed not. your train of thought. Did you learn anything? <laughs> you like, like you know, yeah, yeah, y'all like Five Guys. You know, Five Guys was like the worst <laughs> hamburger in this area in the world. Well, not, oh, I, I wow. think it's not it, the worst. It, it, uh, it, uh, believe me, I've. Well, you I, like I, your hamburgers with pee in them, so. Oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> A good restaurant. <laughs> is a good restaurant. So tell us about your pee pee like, burger. It's like a hamburger and then a bag full of French fries. Yeah, you know, it's. Well, it tell, 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 tell us about your pee pee burger. <laughs> Doug, what's, what state are you from, Doug? State of denial. Iowa. Yeah. I, I, it, I think it's like North Carolina or something. Don't they have these things called hush puppies where you live? Uh, Listen, uh, politically, it's not a very good state in North Carolina right now. I know, but they, they, you ever eat one of those hush puppies? They're uh, like uh, okay. hush dumplings. Puppies. I come with barbecue all the time. I had one the other day. Well, they're like lead. You know, it, I, I can see why you might not like something like Five Guys because they have like potatoes and, uh, it, you know, their French fries are excellent. And they give you a whole, you know, bag full of them. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when, you, when you're used to hush puppies. All the time. Yeah, we have again. Steak up here. <clears throat> so. Wow. Yeah hush, yeah, hush puppies are tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fried yeah. cornbread. Yeah. What? It's hush it's puppies. Fried. fried cornbread. Is that what but it is? Yeah. Add some honey to them. They're great. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I used to. With I used the, to when I was. Grits. I used to live in. Well, when I used to live in Houston, hey. Texas, uh, grits. Uh, and I got to hey. tell you. Fuck them. Uh, uh, what 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 are they? You know, um, I so, tell you. Uh, uh, it, but Josh, uh, 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 do you have a favorite uh, uh, fast food place that, uh, or some place you boycott? One or the other? Maybe the same. Um. Well, I don't I don't buy pizza from that fucking Papa John's guy. Yeah. And uh, I don't particularly like it that Peyton Manning, a guy that I think is pretty respectable, got in business with that guy either but i mean they're entitled to do what they want so you know i just choose not to buy their pizza you know what they've but, done um, here you know what he's done here in new york he has an association with uh he's like one of the sponsors of the new york mets 
Yankees too. Yeah. It's the official pizza of the New York Yankees, and I want to vomit every time I hear that. <laughs> really? Yeah. They, and right there by they, Arthur they, Avenue in the Bronx, where the best yeah. you can get some of the best pizza, and the official pizza of the Yankees is Papa John's. <sighs> yeah, they they used to be the. Uh, Oh, they, they used to be the official pizza at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, too. And then they finally got kicked out of there, and a local pizza La chain called La Rosa's got in. Yeah. And I'm sure That's Dan knows pizza. La Rosa's pretty well. And oh, yeah. They did, that, they did that strikeouts for pizza deal that they do, and every time the Reds strike out 11 opposing batters, anybody that went to the game and has a ticket gets free pizza the next day, and it's it's been great. So Papa John's is never getting back into there. So well, that was I, I like Republican story. pizza. Uh, you know, wasn't Kane the guy who was running uh, for Republican nomination? Wasn't he in the pizza business? Yes, he was. Yeah. Wasn't he? Yeah. What was his? Oh, I don't Godfather's know which pizza. pizza. Godfather's. 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 It was Godfather's. Yeah. Godfather. Pizza. <laughs> which, I always felt. I what? do like five. I do like Five Guys, though. I mean, if I ever get a chance to eat somewhere, it's, I mean, that place is a fucking bomb. I don't know why Doug don't like it. So because <laughs> Doug's a moron, haven't you noticed? Right. Doug likes his uh, uh, okay, okay. Hey, as I said before, for a national change, I would choose Five Guys over Wendy's, McDonald's, Burger King, and all that. But for like a really good hamburger, as I said, there's a local place and, here. And, in it's, it's, and it's, like, it, it, I understand. I understand what you're saying. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. for a caller, I would choose Hitler over you. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you guys are missing all the good hamburgers. If, if you ever go to the uh, restaurant Ruth Chris and you eat at the bar, uh, they've got a hamburger. They got for, a hamburger uh, there that's but, at but, least fifty dollars. It's the best no, fifty dollar hamburger it's, anywhere. It's, it, it, it's eleven dollars and it's uh, seven dollars uh, during happy hour, and it's one of the best. It's probably the best really? hamburger you can ever have. Yeah, now, I'm gonna have to try that. I've heard that name of that place, Ruth Chris. It's Steakhouse. Ruth yeah, Chris. Chris. Sizzling steaks on the platter. Last time I went there was like an anniversary. My steak was sizzling. It's a very expensive steakhouse. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, go during happy hour and eat at the bar. It's it's uh, the best hamburger you've ever had. How much were the French fries? Uh, It comes with the French fries. Oh, wow. okay. someone has a happy hour for fucking hamburgers. I'm gonna have to try that out. <laughs> <laughs> now, my, my wife. We last time I went to Ruth's Chris. Uh, it was like a special occasion. Took my wife there. She got a lobster. The fucking lobster was seventy five dollars. Wow. Market mm. price. You you uh, was, probably ordered a whole lobster. Years ago. I'm sorry, Alex. Well, that, what's so uh, seventy five bucks? That's cheap for a lobster. I mean, here in New York, you'll pay at least a hundred. Like, like fifteen years ago, if want, though. If you want cheap lobster, go to Nova Scotia. Go to Halifax. Oh, yeah. you, oh but, listen. Uh, you know, the one thing up in uh, up in Nova Scotia, not of uh, Nova Scotia, but I went up to, uh, I was up in uh, where was it? Uh, you know, Portland, Maine, and uh, my wife, my ex wife, took me uh, to this place to get. Uh, what she said were considered the world's best lobster rolls. Now, I didn't know what a lobster roll is, but it basically mm. it's a piece of bread with some lobster on it. But, man, this thing was like on a, at a stand, and it was like the best. I, I To this day, I can taste it. It was that good, you know. But, you can go to a McDonald's up in uh, Nova Scotia and get McLobster. It's the no, lobster. they don't have McLobster. Yes, they do. No, I they don't. Yes, you can. Nova, Sco- Nova Scotia in yes. Halifax. The best in Nova lobster. Scotia. The best <laughs> lobster. I That's real lobster there. McLobster. Lobster I ever parts had was parts. <laughs> yeah, the best lobster you ever had was. Oh, I was working in a. Uh, 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 a mining camp in northern British Columbia, and I think I talked about this on my show. We ordered uh, air freight, a bunch of uh, uh, Nova Scotia lobsters, and they were flown across country overnight, and they showed up in a huge styrofoam container with dry ice and everything. And uh, we got a big 50-gallon drum and set up a fire underneath it, and we were out in the middle of nowhere under the stars we could watch satellites going by and we cook up cook, cooked up these lobsters outside and just had a great feast mm, it nice. was, and now i see good. in the news today red lobster yeah, yeah they sold it sold for like 2.1 billion dollars yep really yep. that was yeah. the price of just one lobster yeah, yeah, really? no but two, two point uh, but what, uh, who do they sell to 
The guy who owns Chick-fil-A. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, to an investment firm called yeah. Golden Gate Capital. Yeah, I read like they were like in trouble, but I didn't like go beyond that. I was like, uh, yeah. uh, what's this, Bobby Starr here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, usually when they when they sell to a, an investment firm, that investment firm's gonna turn around and sell them in a couple of years. They're just yeah, yeah. thing for them. Yeah, yeah, but it's the same. Kinda, like Red Lobster and Olive Garden are like the same damn company, so they get yeah. Olive Garden too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah Olive that's a Garden, I hear it is a little better off, but not uh, not much. It's just those sit down places aren't uh, aren't doing it anymore. Chipotle's taken over. It's better food, though. I mean, Olive Garden is brutal. Actually, I understand no, Chipotle uh, is owned by McDonald's. No, they but, used to own a piece of it. They they uh, divested themselves. Yeah. Uh, so, but the thing is that um, uh, let, let's see here. Who uh, they just uh, they made a big deal out of the fact that Taco Bell just bought up. Was it Chipotle? Who did they buy? Oh. They bought. Yeah, it was Chipotle. I think they bought. No, I don't think so. I don't think Chipotle. It was somebody else, and they said now they're getting into the gourmet, you know, Spanish food yeah. business. And yet everybody forgets that they bought up Chevy's a long time ago, which is maybe basically on, out on the West Coast, and Chevy's was uh, was all these Mexican restaurants. That's the that place were, that's on time in Times Square. Look, right? look there, he's got a Chevy's hat. Hold it up to your oh. camera. <laughs> Hold it up because it's TV night, so you, people who are looking at the video on this can see that. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, stay tuned, folks, because we're all going to show our penises by the end of the show. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's when you need to oh, get wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold here. on a second. What do you? What do you get? You got a Chevy's too? Um, um, a oh. Chevy's, but it's a my Cinco de Mayo, uh, my uh, celebration there. Oh, that was the last time you had a drink. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, good. I just want to make sure of that. Uh, um, now, here's a, here's a question I got for you, though. As long as we're talking about, you know, how how settled we are in this whole idea of boycotting things and we don't want to go to this place or that place. I mean, I, I can't bring myself, quite frankly, to go to Chick-fil-A, but I'm not going to stand outside telling other people they shouldn't, okay? But now, here here's where the morality comes in. Uh, the what the biggest broadcasting chain in America is who? Anybody Clear know? Channel. Huh? Clear, Clear channel. channel. Clear, Clear channel. channel. Everybody just said Clear Channel at once. Yeah. Who owns Clear Channel? Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Well, there's a Thomas H. There's a, there's a <laughs> H. Bolte. <laughs> they will soon at the way they're. Young yeah, they're doing. Sterling. Thomas H. Lee Partners <laughs> LP. Okay. And another company called Bain Capital. Bain. Wow. Uh -huh. Now we all know yes. who was used to work from with Batman. Ba huh? Yeah, from Batman or The Dark Knight. Bain Capital. Yeah. Yes. Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney was Mitt Romney. one of Bain Capital's major uh, yeah. people, right? So right. now this is the number one. The chances that if I were looking for work, I would be talking to somebody at a clear channel station would probably be the case. All mm -hmm. right. There'd maybe be a one out of three oh. chance that if I just stuck a pin in a list of radio stations that I'll apply here, that I would be applying to a, 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 a capital cities a station, a clear channel, a clear channel station, excuse me. Cap cities doesn't exist anymore. Clear mm -hmm. channel station. So the question is from a morality standpoint, what do I do? You go to work for them. It's I'm about a, a paycheck. As long as they let you be you. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you they're may notice, money. most of their talk shows are all right-wing talk shows anyway. Right. But, but if the they're going to hire you, they're going to know you're not. You're not going to yeah, sit and do a... So if they're going to hire you and they let you be you, then you need to go to work for them. Y yeah. I, I. Okay. But I was just saying, what do we do? You know, uh, mm -hmm. we, 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 do, do I... You know, well, I mean, I have worked for them, as a matter of fact, because I did a couple of relief shifts over at WOR here shift. in New York. So, right. Do a sports show. Do a sports show. show. <laughs> I'll, I'll walk in with my better. sports Emmy. Say, do I know sports? Look at this. <laughs> um, Patrick? Yeah, I, I, um, on that morality question, one of my uh, 
uh, college uh, instructors. Yeah. He had turned down a major job offer to work for Philip Morris mm -hmm. company. Um, he was a uh, creative director and at a uh, ad agency out in New York, mm -hmm. and Philip Morris had uh, hunted him down and wanted him to work for them, and he turned it down specifically because he he said he could not bring himself to advertise or promote advertising of cigarettes and tobacco products that have been proven to kill people. And he said it was a, a hard decision for him to make because there was, you know, a lot of money involved. He said, but in the end, he had to be able to sleep at night. Now, Is this before 1975? Uh, uh, you know. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was back, it was back in the 70s or early 80s, yeah. When they were still advertising cigarettes? Yeah. 73, I think, is when they banned cigarette ads. So it, mm -hmm. it was, um, so you, I mean, it, it was a while, well, well, many years ago before he started teaching, but, you know, and, and, and like Rob said, Alex, if they allow you to be yourself and you're not having to pigeonhole yourself into mm -hmm. something you're not, what does it matter? Right. I mean, it, it's the same as me. I, I work almost exclusively with credit unions and I've done that for 16 years. Mm-hmm. And I would love to stay with that because I believe in the philosophy and I believe in all of it. However, if I get a job or an offer somewhere, and let's say it's a bank, I would have to give up all of my freelance work mm -hmm. because there would be conflicts of interest. But it's a matter of where am I going to get paid? You know, so for me, it's kind of a moral issue too. Do I let all my clients go? For that job, or do I wait until there's a job that opens up that I can still do that same freelance work with? Right. So, I mean, if you can be yourself, do it. Well, you know, I had a, uh, I always had a, a deal with radio stations. Radio stations, so many times, want you to do, if you could, live reads, because they always feel that if the person who's on the air does the live read, then it seems to give it more credibility and so on. And I have always said wherever I was, I had, had to always put in my contract or as an understanding between myself and management, is that I had to approve all live reads on a case-by-case -case basis because I felt my reputation relied on the only thing that I had that I possibly could sell to a station was my credibility. And that if I suddenly started doing ads for things that held no credibility, then uh, that would be a problem. So. Uh, a, a lot of times I wouldn't turn down ads. I mean, I, I was the largest seller of Vermont teddy bears anywhere in the country, you know, at one point. But when I was at Sirius, they would come to me with stuff. And, you know, their, a lot of their stuff was really low-rent advertising. You know, they would take anything that, sl sl uh, that crawled in under the tra uh, transom. And in, in this case, it was selling gold on the air. Uh, <laughs> Glenn Beck. Yeah, and I turned and it Schultz. down. And they said, why are you turning this down? And I said, because it's phony baloney, because when the market suddenly, you're selling it like it's the most, the best thing you can invest in, it's the safest thing you can invest in, and that's a big fucking lie, and I'm not going to be part of it. And when it collapses, I don't want my people coming back to me and going, you lied to us about gold. Didn't you do the Charlie McPherson meat market uh, commercial? Nobody beats Charlie McPherson's meat. No. <laughs> <laughs> but nice of you to tr nice of you to slip that joke in. Anyway. <laughs> uh, the, but here, you know, the, the, and the point was that I just I couldn't bring myself to to push gold. So they they were like beating me up, going, "How can you not sell the gold?" And I'm going, you know. Let uh, what who who's the who's the really liberal guy who he was selling yeah. it every day? Uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah. Tom, Hartman. Uh, Tom Hartman. Tom Hartman was selling gold like it was coming out his ass. You know, yeah. oh, it's the best investment to make, and he's doing it because they're paying him money and he wants to make a quick buck. Okay, so cut to the gold crisis. Remember the gold crisis that hit, where all of a sudden the bottom fell out of the gold prices. And I'm sure. go and I go to my bosses and I go. Now you know why I didn't want to do ads for them. 
And that's uh, Tom Hartman was having to sit there on the air and make excuses as to why he was selling gold. I remember that. I I remember. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a good time listening to that. Yeah. Uh, because it, it, I never heard Beck do any explaining. In fact, some of the ads that Beck did were he phrased it in such a way, and and I think Hannity did too, that they were they were divesting themselves of any. Uh, real um, endorsement of it yeah. uh, for the company. They were just talking about gold as a commodity, but the company itself, they were kind of like, yeah, and then make sure you read all the shit they send you just to kind of get them out of it. But uh, I, I remember Tom Hartman where it seemed to be a little bit further into it than they were. Yeah. Well, but, you see, what happens is these guys, you got to realize... Guys like Tom Hartman, they don't have that large an audience. So they need to take any business they can get. And when and sometimes they will take business like this. I don't care if I was starving to death, I wouldn't have done those gold commercials. It, I just I wouldn't want to lead my audience astray because what what would I be doing by selling them gold? I would be costing them money. All right? I would be eventually, when the bottom fell out on that, a lot of people took a, lost a lot of money in, in that gold. Um, so, uh, you know, to suddenly be on the air selling it like, you know, there's nothing surer than gold. Well, maybe there was nothing surer than gold when it was set at a price of $32 an ounce and it never changed, and that's exactly what it went for for years. But when they deregulated it and it could go up and fluctuate and do all of that, no, things are not good as gold. Yes, Patrick. Um, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. understand Bitcoin. <laughs> Somebody explain Bitcoin yeah. to me. Okay, and that's, that's, that's what I was going to do is um, I was listening to Beck one, one day during the week, mm -hmm. and he was, I wanted to hear him bash all the Republicans running. Yeah. And, uh, more conspiracy theories. Yeah. He talked about uh, Bitcoin. And now he never explained it because nobody can seem to fucking explain this stuff. But the only thing that I got out of what Bitcoins are, yeah, it's a way to transfer money, uh, much like PayPal, only there's no credit card numbers or debit card numbers involved. It, it, like you have a certain amount of, of money sitting in an account that would be, let's say, it would be PayPal, and then you would just distribute it from there. So it's almost like using cash out of your wallet. But wait a minute, wait a minute. It's Hold on a second. Bitcoin was virtual money, is what yeah. I was led to believe, and you don't actually, it's not really money? Well, it is. It, it, Look at it this I mean, do you buy a certain amount of bitcoins with cash, and then yeah. you've got bitcoins, so now you have you've That's turned your real money into no money at all? Is that what you've <laughs> done? My, my understanding, and and I might be way off on this, and I know Albert was trying to figure this out for months. Is to me, it sounds like a debit card or a credit card, where we it's not in your hands, and it, it's not really there. It's in an account. You have it sitting at your bank or your credit union account, but when you hand over your card, it, you're, you're not giving actual money. I mean, the transaction going through, and Bitcoin is a, another way of doing that, only now there's no numbers involved. And there was some guy. What, what were you going to say? Just, Phil, Phil was going to ask a question here. What, Phil? Uh, yeah, there was some guy in San Francisco that was selling millions of dollars worth of drugs over the internet using Bitcoin. And if so, if there's no exchange of money, how did, you know, uh, how did they arrest them for, uh, for selling drugs? Oh, well, over they, the they, were, they were virtual drugs. <laughs> no, they were real. <laughs> my, my understanding is the exchange of money is a lot like PayPal, where if you have a PayPal account and I do, yeah. I can transfer money to you and then it's in your account. So it, it's sort of the same way, and my understanding is, with this Bitcoin thing, um, it, I just use my damn debit card. And, yeah. you know, it's easy that way. I, there, 
there was people who yeah yeah there's been people who've been using bitcoin to launder money they've been putting bad money in buying bitcoin with it letting it sit for a bit and then cashing out the bitcoin and going back into real money and their money's no longer you know it's it's no longer sort of mystery dirty money it's 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 been transacted properly so yeah there's seems to be a big concern there yeah I, it's gone now right it's gone there's no more bitcoin well there's somebody came they came along they, they seem to be some kind of problem or with it or something and they, they, they missing they they lost huh billions of dollars or something bitcoin somewhere yeah so how about the people who had bitcoin Bye bye. Uh, oh, they I don't have, have two bits to rub together. They don't have two bits to rub together. Exactly. But I'm enough because of the gold. Like you said, when it was thirty or thirty-two dollars an ounce, then maybe, uh, you know, it, it was worth something. But I think Bitcoin was an investment that's a little bit too soon because number one, nobody really knows what the hell it is. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you need another currency? What's that? Why do you need another currency? Well, that's right. And, and, well, I, uh, you know, in a way, I agree that our money is virtual money now. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. when my boss pays me, he puts it into my account at the bank. There's right. no cash that goes there. There's some money that comes out of his account, which is virtual, goes into my virtual account. Then I pay all my bills virtually with all of that. And occasionally I'll go down to the ATM and uh, get myself some of that good old cash just so I can have something in my pocket to pay th for stuff with. Uh, but uh, so I understand that far, but somewhere along the line there, I can withdraw that money. So yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not going away though. I mean, I just, I'm just reading about eBay just added a digital currency section to their transactions. And, and they're also saying that uh, Bitcoin is coming to PayPal wallet soon. I don't understand it. I ahead of the curve. I didn't know that. Beats yeah, I didn't either. Me. It, wow. it, it, the only the only other thing um, now that I I think about it that uh, back we're talking about is the Bitcoin somehow eliminate the banking industry where it's a way of going around them where it's almost as if it's just straight cash from me to you uh, if we were to barter for something. And I'm not sure how that works because <clears throat> where is the money sitting? Where is if it backed not, by? What's yeah. it backed by? Well, you have to buy it with cash. Means you have to go somewhere with cash and right, pay somebody. It, it just, I'm, I'm looking at a thing on the uh, on the internet that says one bitcoin equals four hundred and forty seven point six nine U.S. dollars. Yeah, but the other thing is it's it's been fluctuating so much that it was as high as nine hundred and fifty. Like wow. last year, then it dropped to 770. Now it's at 445. Well, I'll make sure to get involved in this shit because that's just <laughs> what I want in my fucking currency. To yeah. keep fluctuating. Sounds like <laughs> worse than gold. <laughs> One month you can't pay your rent with it, the next month you can. Exactly. <laughs> Anything that anything that fluctuates like that equals scam. Trouble. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, but a lot of people were taken in by this, weren't they? A lot of people went for Bitcoin. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, all yeah, these touchy. People voted for George Bush twice too. So. Well, it's probably, no, it's probably, but there's probably all those like touchy feely people. You know, the same ones that you know think that granola is good for you. You know. I'm serious. I, I mean, they go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have to deal with the banks anymore. I'm going to Bitcoin. You know, it's like those people saying, oh, I'm, I'm safe. I have a 401k. That's, a, <laughs> that's the Bitcoin of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of Wall Street, you know. Well, I told you guys last night or the other night, I happened to lock out with that um, just because I knew what the hell I was doing. But I agree with you. It, I, it, it's a fluctuating thing, and if you don't know what you're doing, uh, you can you can lose your ass on on everything. Yeah. And it it you know it's money coming out that you want saved, and if the market's good, you can make a killing, and if it goes to shit, you're fucked. And how many people lost twenty years worth of their four hundred one k's back in what was it two thousand eight or nine? Yeah. You know, um. 
And there's no way to recover that other than time. Well, they, if they stuck with him, they probably were are in pretty good shape now, right? Right. Yep. It that happened to me. I lost about forty thousand dollars, and in a year, I was able to recover that. But that's because I moved around some investments and I figured out what I needed to do. But I just happened to get lucky. And just regular also, income averaging will help you there, though. If you're making a contribution out of your paycheck every week and you're buying cheap, when that goes back up, the money that you spent per share, you're you're going to more than take care of your you know you your remember, losses. You remember when the market crashed at uh, 08 and uh, the uh, Dow went down to about 5,000, and now it's at 16,000. So if you didn't sell and you hung on. Uh, and it came back and it tripled. Uh, I remember so sitting around the office. We were talking, and I think uh, it was Chase Bank was down to like two a dollar a share or some crazy they were number. Delisted, I think. And every yeah, and everybody was yeah. in the office saying, "I should buy, I should buy, I should buy." Nobody bought it. We all watched it, and you know it would have been a nice. Well, you know, killing. you know what happened with me. I, you know, here uh, there was a time when serious stock went down to ready. Five cents. Yeah. I, found I should have thrown $10,000 behind that one and just taken the chance that, hey, maybe I'll lose 10000 bucks. But if I had invested 10000 then, hell, I'd be sitting on about a half a million now. Nice. You know, so when you look at a guy like John Malone, who bailed out the company for 40% of their stock and bought it at five cents a share at the time, he walked away with billions you know wow so well, the I, market the market always recovers uh especially over a long period of time i mean no matter how severe the crash is i mean short of an apocalypse the market always recovered i mean the market in 1929 the market was recovered in six months maybe a year mm -hmm. you know at the most almost fully i mean and really, the Great Depression was not caused by the collapse of the stock market. I mean, it was almost a separate issue. I mean, the Depression was caused by the collapse of the agricultural industry that had been hurting for years and the systemic failure that it caused, you know, a after its collapse. But yeah. the mar so, I mean, historically, the market always recovers, no matter how much you lose. I mean, the only people that it would really affect, you know, harshly are people who are looking to retire within, you know, a year or two years or who don't have that. 15, 20 more years to wait on it to come back. Yeah. So in other words, if things go bad with your 401k, best thing to do is to just sit there and ride it out. Yeah. Well, get out I mean, early. You may, you may need to move some things around to just make sure that you're no longer in some kind of a fund that's, you know, bleeding heavily and isn't going to recover because it's, you know, it's got a Bear Stearns in it or a something, you know, like that. You may need to you need to pay attention to it. You need to monitor it. But, I mean, in all yeah. honesty, and I'm not an investment advisor, but, I mean, just yeah. looking at the historical trend, you just need to you just need to leave it alone, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm really sorry that we lost Doug because now I don't have anybody to beat up anymore. <laughs> we, we, we were getting some good entertainment value yeah. out of that tonight. What? Oh, yeah. What, what Patrick? Just beat on me from the uh, chest down. I won't feel it. Yeah, I know that. I know that. In case people don't know, the reason he's sitting is because he's paraplegic. The reason the rest of us are sitting is we're just lazy. Lazy. So it's you know, um, I'm actually That's trying true. to see. I'm actually trying now to see how. Uh, well, in, in in my respect for you, Patrick, and my loyalty to you, I've been trying to see how little I can walk. In a given day. That's a, that's a very good, very good thing to try to do, yes. Playing into my, oh, guess who's calling back? Doug. There we go. Uh, 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 your entertainment value right there. What? So I thought I'd bring back your entertainment value right there. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Well, yes. you didn't have to take me, uh, you didn't have for... to take me at my word. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, no, because I have this this theory in, uh, you know, everybody says, go out and exercise, go run, go running, do all that crap. I have a theory that if you don't use your body, it won't wear out as fast. <laughs> I, I ran uh, about six and a half miles today. Yeah. 
the way that I do my exercising, just so you know, Alex. Yes. Uh, how, what did you? Oh, yeah. You do, you do that kind of like. Well, it's, well, it, 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 it's your bit. It, it's your version of, of of working out the way the Bitcoin is some version of money. Uh, yeah, except mine is actually effective. It is effective. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My, mine is actually effective. Yeah. Do you ever so, do you ever get phantom pains by any any chance? Um, I get weird uh, sensations. I get buzzing in my legs. Yeah. Um, it, and it and it constant. Um, pain. Not, not so much. Um, is something wrong, I, Jim, Jim? Jim, is there something wrong? No, that's my phantom pain. Oh, oh it's your phantom pain. <laughs> yeah, wow. no, it's my phantom of the opera pain. I'm sorry. Yes, and over one eye. Come on, give me some credit. <laughs> yes, phantom of the opera pain. You know, I had a friend. He lost. He. I was working at a radio station in Texas. And he lost his leg in an automobile accident in Ty near Tyler, Texas, and uh, so now we I've got a, we've got a, a radio announcer with one leg, and he comes back to work after the leg has been cut off, and you know you're wondering how you're going to get used to that, but you get used to it pretty fast, but initially you're wondering how you're going to be able to handle it, you know, because it's not a comfortable feeling when somebody loses their leg, and so I got to talking to him about it, and he I said. So what did they do with the leg once they amputated it? And he said, funny story about that. He said, I, uh, I got sent home from the hospital. I recovered at home. And when I was well enough, I decided to go back to the hospital and ask what happened to the leg. And they said to me, and I swear to you, this is the story he told me. They said to me, what we do is we put it in formaldehyde for a month. And then we bury it. And he says, well, why do you put it in formaldehyde for a month and then bury it? Or why don't you just cremate it or whatever? He says, it's to get rid of the phantom pains. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, these were That's legitimate doctors. doctors. Yeah. My next question would have been, did my leg really need to be amputated? <laughs> you know, because... <laughs> I mean, when some guy is using voodoo uh, yeah. uh, medicine like that. Yeah, it is, it's a little bizarre. Can we uh, trust him on anything else at this point? But he said it didn't work anyway because he would get phantom pains, you know. Well, I mean, shit, they were in Texas. I mean, what the fuck do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, true. I, yeah. I, I mean, I'd probably, rather have, I'd probably rather have my leg amputated in fucking Mexico than I would in Texas. Oddly enough, some of the best hospitals in the United States happen to be in Texas. Uh, MD Anderson Ca Cancer Hospital, one of the best anywhere, and they, that's where Dr. DeBakey used to do all his heart operations. Right. It was in Houston, Texas. Yes, Douglas? Uh I was like going to this like private school that my parents were like paying you know buku dollars for. And I had this like business law teacher who wouldn't teach business law. He was like talk about his like past experience like working at this morgue. And one of the things he brought up was like how they had this you know uh, corpse or not before before she became a corpse. Had, like, at at, like, at funeral amputated. homes they do have corpses. Well anyway, but this lady had like leg amputated. And she wanted to, like, preserve so when she was dead, it would be buried with her. And this guy's, like, talking about how, like, they turn into a damn lamp. <laughs> I think he was watching a Christmas story. Christmas story. <laughs> no, 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 this is not, this is way before Christmas story. This guy was, like, I mean, he was, like, I mean, he was, like, it was funny as hell. He was the best teacher I ever had named Mr. Marvin Wilson. And he was, like, talking about, like, they'd, like, go, like, collect these dead bodies and, like, like you know, in, like, dominantly black areas and, like, how, you know, just how the blacks would be scared to death and how they, like, would just go around, like, just taunt the blacks in the corner. What? With these corpses. Uh, yeah. You get me again? <laughs> huh? You, you, you kind of like, uh, what's his name was writing about Dave last night about, you know... Uh, did you hear that thing that uh, the, uh, our our friend uh, David, um, the yeah, Czechoslovakian, lost, lost his job in uh, that warehouse there? What? Yeah, he lost his job yesterday. Who? Yes, Dave. Dave. No, did yeah, he really? Yeah, his second job. 
Oh, it was the second job? Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, but, you know, give them, like, fares to get to uh, Europe, you know, once or twice a year. Wow. I'm sorry to hear that. He's yeah, it like, really sucked. Yeah, no, that does suck. But anyway, he, he was, uh, he, he, uh, he sent me a, uh, um, David Hadjik, uh, is, and he, he sent me a thing after the show yesterday because he heard, uh, he heard Portland Day when he went, shall we say, ballistic about, <laughs> about uh, 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 how uh, Bill Gates was spending his money. And he said, listening to Portland Dave is like watching Game of Thrones. I just don't get him. <laughs> so, oh, what's up, that's fine. <laughs> Very funny, Dave. Well, uh, it, uh, David. David is, is and, and Dave, please don't be upset by that. But at times, it is it is hard to get what you're saying. Dave's the best. He's the he's the best. Even when he's <clears throat> insulting me, he's the best. I mean, <laughs> I laugh. So yeah, I like I like. David. You know what makes David the best? What? He sent me a Star Wars book that he found in, in one of the cars he was working on. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice guy. Yeah, huh. very nice yeah. guy. Yeah, and yeah. and the way that he explained it in the uh, message when he said he had it, yeah. he said something like, I don't give a fuck <laughs> about Star Wars, but if you would like the book, I'll send it to you. So I, oh. and then he, I can just hear him singing like he does on Albert's show. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. So yeah, I don't the cat. Dave, yeah, Dave, I don't yeah, the cat. I don't. Yeah. yeah. Dave's, I mean, really, you know, down to earth. I mean, I was like talking to him about car advice because I had to get like another vehicle, mm -hmm. and like, oh my god, I was so like so upside down on the vehicle I had beforehand. I mean, you know, Dave gave you know gave the best advice. You know, get rid of the damn car and have it now. Okay. Anyway, how many yep. here? How many here watch Big Bang Theory? Any of you? Yeah, yep. I do. Huh? Yeah. That's and, and I got how, tired of it. How many? You oh, how many? How many of you freeze frame the vanity uh, uh, card at the end of the show and read it? Do you know what I'm talking about? I used uh, to yeah. do that with uh, Two and a Half Men, instead, especially yeah, when they were in there fighting. In, instead of uh, instead of the normal. Uh, logo for a production company. Chuck Lorre's logo every week is what he calls a vanity card, where he writes yeah, something. Yeah, he writes a big paragraph. Yeah, uh, and and what he's taken to doing now is it used to be he used to write one for every show he had on the air. So when he had Two and a Half Men and Big Bang Theory on the air, he did two a week. But then when he had Mike and Molly and Mom, uh, that was getting to be too much. So he does one for all of them for the week, unless it's like last night's episode of Big Bang. In which it was the last episode. And he says, thank you for watching. This was a vanity card. We don't take your support for granted. We know it must be earned. Your time and attention have real quantifiable value. That means when you choose to give to us, we in return must return something to you of equal or greater value. And what is that something? Well, if we were making a drama, your time and attention would likely be repaid with excitement and suspense and perhaps some insight into the human condition. If we were a cable news business, the fair exchange would be with information about current <clears throat> events, plus some steady drip of adrenaline caused by fear and anger. We, were we making pornography, the transaction would involve sexual arousal and an opportunity to interact with the program. <laughs> yeah, porn. All right. But, but, we get it, Doug. <laughs> but we make comedy, so our only hope of repaying you for your time and attention is with laughter. We're constantly aware if you're not provided with a reasonable amount of mirth, we would have not fulfilled our side of the bargain. You will, in all likelihood, take your business elsewhere. See you in the fall. Enjoy the summer reruns, which, lacking the element of surprise, offer 30% less mirth. Feel free to watch them half-heartedly. I always like the way he writes, especially that whole thing about porn, about uh, 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 the opportunity to interact with the program. <laughs> um, but I, I read his stuff every week, and some of it is just absolutely brilliant. And some of it's quite leftist, oddly enough. You would, uh, I'm sorry, Patrick, if he does that. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, you know, it's about f uh, s five minutes from J Jim's show, so I better let you go, Jim, so you can go prepare tonight's program. 
What okay. is on what is on tonight's program? Canadian stuff. Hey. I'm looking forward hey, to that. I'm, I'm stretching stuff. out. I'm stretching out hey. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's stuff there's stuff to talk about. It's you know. Yeah, I know. Thanks for joining us tonight, uh, Jim, and okay. we'll all see you in a couple of minutes. I hope you guys will uh, call him and say hello, and you know. Uh, and Rob has been doing the the uh, um, uh, uh, Albert show for the week. Wait a minute, Legally Blind Bob. Hello, Legally Blind Bob. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, yes, I am. Uh, this is my first Skype call I've ever made. Ever? Oh. Ever. Wow. Congratulations. Is it video or is it? Well, it's, uh, it's video, but shut up, Doug. It, I don't want to be <laughs> rude, uh, 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 Bob. Yeah. Uh, but if you're legally blind, do you care whether it's video or not? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the glasses? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, my Coke bottle glasses. Okay, so you you can actually see, but you can't. But but but, but limit. I do have a little sight in one eye. Yeah, but you're le <laughs> legally blind. You yeah. got a blind guy and a crippled man. All you need is a deaf motherfucker. You have the trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about that uh, Byerly's orange pop? Anyone that, heard of that one? Uh, Byerly's orange. Yes, yes. Nesbitt's was the one I liked. Nesbitt's of California. Byerly's was always... I never felt they were all that good. Plus, they also put out, like, uh, I don't know, Cherry Pop and uh, Strawberry Pop and all those, right? There was a Frosty Root Beer, too. Well, there was Mug Root Beer. It was called Frosty. Frosty? I remember that when I was a kid. I Frosty. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it, yeah, no, I, I uh, uh, it, it, it was good. Well, I hate, but so this is your first time ever using Skype? Uh, I tried it once with somebody with an Android uh, tablet, but I couldn't get the video to work out right. So I guess if this is working, this oh, is my oh, first if you, successful if you were thing. You, if you were using a tablet and calling this program to the group calls, uh, Skype doesn't allow you to do the group calls with a tablet. Now, why, I have no idea. You know, go ask Microsoft. I'm actually on an iPod Touch. Okay, but that's, uh, that's still would probably not give you a video uh, for the group for the group if you and I were just talking I we could do a video call so mm -hmm. that's the way that's the way it works I'm sorry you called so late though because you're oh, catching us well, at I the did, end now of the that show I know it works I'll be calling Damn. well please do that awesome. Bob and I want to okay. first of all I want to thank Doug for being here for the entertainment value I get a kick out of Doug <laughs> no, everybody does. Yeah, well, I like to kick Doug. I, I appreciate you allowing me on here. So. Yeah, all right. Uh, kiss my <laughs> ass. Uh, Rob, thank you, and I hope you, uh, and we're really enjoying you doing Albert's show. You're doing a great job, and, you know, yeah. now that that's the case, I think I could go on vacation sometime. Well, I wonder if <laughs> <laughs> thank is, you. Is Albert worried that he uh, might not? Nah, have hell. Hell. Hell no. No, but I mean, it's nice to know that we we've, we've got somebody who's up to the task and does a great job of it, and uh, and it's been going pretty flawlessly for you, Dan Meyer. Thank you for joining yeah. us tonight. I'm uh, the one that hasn't had a power failure or anything like that. Uh, uh, well, no, I, no, I haven't had a power failure either. But the uh, but uh, uh, what uh, what's his name has uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Rebel Stoke Jim has, and last night Miranda was like yeah. in in breakdown hell. Uh, and I want to also thank, uh, uh, of course, uh, Dan Meyer, Legally Blind Bob, for giving it his first shot. And uh, how about that key Keystone Pipeline? He, he, we'll, uh, ta we'll talk about <laughs> the too, late, too late to start on that now. Josh Wheeler, thank you. Mark Thorner, Patrick, and Phil uh, Meyer. I could see you outside your window, Phil. Looks like you live in Marin these days. Uh, no, I'm in the Berkeley Hills. The Berkeley Hills. So I'm just trying to see what part of the bay I was looking at. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for all of you joining me this morning. Okay, hey, I'm, uh, we'll, or this evening, and we'll see y'all uh, on Monday. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye. And that's about it. You know what that means? Time for me to say goodbye and remind you: if you see her, tell her I love her.
We'll see you later. Bye, everybody.